Hi, welcome to this tutorial on how to create a theatrical logo sting using the new tools in Plexus 2. This is basically a text tutorial for Plexus 2, in other words, a tutorial on how to create really cool text animations using Plexus. So why don't we just take a look at the finished piece real quick. <laughs> Alright, so that's the piece, and you'll be amazed to learn that all of that was created with one layer that has Plexus, um, two instances of Plexus. One instance to create all of the text stuff, and another instance to create that like subtle uh, star field that's in the background. Everything else, uh, just the other, was another text layer here just to create the, uh, you know, the URL here at the end. So I'm going to show you how very easy and quick it is to create this really complex style animation using just one layer. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll make the comp 1280 by 720, but you can, of course, make it whatever size you want. And the way Plexus works with text layers is you start with an actual text layer. So we'll just go ahead and add a text layer, and we'll just do Plexus 2. Let's go ahead and uh, put this in the center. Uh, let's try our text styling here. We want it to have it be filled. And we'll also just make it, this little button here makes it a, look like it's plexus squared. That's just a cute little addition. So that's our base uh, text layer. And so to that text layer, we'll go ahead and apply Robite Plexus. So when you first apply Plexus, uh, nothing happens. That's because Plexus works with uh, geometry in the scene, and by default, no geometry is added. So the first thing we need to do is go to the Add Geometry and go ahead and add geometry. Because this is a text layer, it's considered a paths object. So if I go ahead and select the paths object, it will automatically recognize that this is a text layer that it was applied to, Internally, it creates paths from that text layer and then generates a paths object based on that text layer. Now, it's important to understand that it does this internally because we don't actually have to, in the past, you would actually have to go and select uh, the text layer and then go ahead and say um, create masks from text. The reason it's cool that you don't have to do that anymore is that, and I will show this really in more in depth later, but that means that I can actually use the text animators for example so let me go ahead and just apply the uh, position text animator here to my text um, and go ahead and uh, let me turn this on I'm gonna just affect affect the, the first two letters here so if I go ahead and move the position you can see now that Plexus let's go ahead and uh, turn on the replicator here real quick so I'm just gonna turn on the replicator just so you can see what's happening here Okay, so now I have a Plexus object. If I add a camera and we rotate this, just, I just want you to understand that this is a true 3D Plexus situation going on. So now I'm going to basically play with the text animator. And then you can see that it's, you know, it's applying this sort of text animator animation to the Plexus object. This is a really powerful concept that you can do some really, really, really cool stuff with. I use this, uh, this concept to do the, the little two here that does the little cling. And, you know, that was super easy to do. I just did it with a text animator. So that's what uh, is really cool about the new way that the text, the text layers work. So again, you just apply Plexus straight to the text layer, and then it automatically finds the paths when you apply the paths object. You can uh, just make sure that, see, it says get paths from text. So if I turn that off, then obviously it won't work. So you just have to make sure that that's on. It's on by default, but just in case, keep that in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and turn off the replicator for now. So we'll go back to one. So when you first apply Plexus, it adds the points renderer by default, which is what we're seeing here. But what we're actually going to do first, if we go back here, we'll see that it 
it's doing this sort of like cool like write on effect and it's kind of doing it like in 3d space that's the new beams renderer so if we go down to add renderer we'll go ahead and add beams renderer and we'll go ahead and turn off the points render for now so just turn it off and you just do that in Plexus by simply unchecking uh, you know disabling the effect in this in this effect stack so if I turn off the beams render nothing's there because even though we have the object nothing is rendering the object the workflow workflow and metaphor in Plexus is really straightforward and it's really powerful because it applies to very straightforward uh, you add geometry and then you render the geometry and then if you have any effectors you affect the geometry and then you render that with the effector on so and because you just have things in a stack however they are arranged in the stack is how they're rendered so it's really cool so so we're, so now we just have the beams render uh, the beams render works also like the text animators do it has this concept of a range and then you can actually do things with the range so if I Go ahead and say for example bring the range and from 100 i can come back and you can see we have this like write on effect that's very cool but what happens if we go ahead and turn on this replicator again so if we well, that might be too much so let's uh, all right so now we have something too much here let's go ahead and see what's happening Oh, I know what's happening. They're just too close to each other. So let's just go ahead and increase the distance. This does not look right. Let's see. Aha! I had the axis wrong. So you need to make sure you have the right axis. So as you can see here, switching the axis gives you different results. So what we want is to draw the beams along the x-axis, which is, of course, the front axis. When we were just looking at one layer, it didn't look uh, any different. But So here we go. We can see now that as I now animate the range it does this write on effect which is essentially what we had here at the beginning right so we have it writing on backwards like this so as you can see that it's just as simple as animating the range end here so as you can see there's the O's so what I did is I basically if we go ahead and delete we're just gonna reset the camera so we'll just add a new camera quickest way to reset the camera and we'll also add a null object and we'll make that null a 3d null and we'll attach the camera to that null so now when we rotate the null on the y-axis we can see the side here and uh, we probably extruded it a little bit too much so let's not extrude it as much now notice how it's extruding from the center it's going both back and forward that's because the replicate direction here is set to both if I set it to plus Z it's gonna go back right because that's positive Z it's just gonna extrude back and if I obviously do minus Z it's gonna do the opposite so um, if you look here it's actually sort of anchored on the front one so what I did there is I selected it to be plus Z so it, it actually extrudes anchored on the front on the front uh, layer if you will okay so once we have it a little bit further like this we can now also go ahead and keyframe things so we'll go ahead and keyframe the null here and we'll so we'll keyframe the point of interest and position of the camera a little bit further down the line and here we'll what we'll do is we will change the zoom in and we'll zoom in that camera so notice the reason I attach it to the null is I'm separating the zooming in of the camera from the rotation of the camera and that makes for more even camera animations so now that I'm zoomed in here I can keep rotating to see how I want this to be so I'm just gonna keep going further so if I come back here now and I put my rotation to zero and we go ahead and easy ease these keyframes so let's just um, easy ease so now <clears throat> that might be too much but you get the idea I think I started zoomed in past the past the object but let's just do it here so we can see what's happening so the other thing we need to do is just keyframe the range animating on so I'm gonna start at range 0 and I'm gonna put the key from there at the beginning and then when I come here I want it to be completely drawn on so now 
if we play this down, you can see it's starting to draw really fast. So um, it, if I take the first keyframe and I choose, you can't see this, it's a little bit off screen, but it's essentially keyframe assistant, easy ease out, or shift controller command F9. And so now it's going to start drawing out a little bit slower. It's still going a little bit too fast. So let's just move these keyframes back a little bit. Now I, I chose a piece of music and that was what was driving my design and my, sorry, my animation. I just wanted it to sting, but you can obviously control it however you want. We're not going to do the exact same piece again, obviously, but I'm just going to show you the concepts that I did to get the animation to work. So if you want it to go even slower, you can just select that first keyframe, go into the graph animator, and then just really ease out that first keyframe so that it seems like it's drawing, you know, slow at first. And then now the other thing I started doing as it was drawing on is I was kind of making it um, the extrusion depth come back to zero so that we were just literally at, well, it seems like it's a, it was a little bit of a sleight of hand. So we just basically squished it so it went to nothing for one frame. Uh, that frame, see, there's nothing. And then I bring it back on just using the points renderer. So literally, I mean, this stuff is so easy once you kind of understand how to do it. So we go over here to our paths object and we just keyframe the extrude depth. So we go from 700 here. Well, probably not right away. I think I waited for a little bit and then we'll go to zero. And then the other thing I did is I also keyframed the number of copies. Actually, I think I might have left the number of copies, but which is why the uh, dots seem a little bit um, crispy. But uh, you could also animate that to just be one if you wanted. That all of this stuff is keyframeables, which is really cool. See how it looks a little bit uh, unaliased? That's because of the number of copies. So I think that this would might be an improvement. To just go and set this to one, and you can see here how it just changed the look. So. Although, look interestingly, it, it started actually creating the lines between it. One of, that was one of the reasons, by the way, well, well, we'll get into it in a second. So let's just take a look at that. So if we play this down, by the way, notice how fast this is rendering. Plexus renders really, really fast. And that's not even using the GPU acceleration. If you have a recent GPU, I'm sorry, G, recent graphics card, and you turn on the GPU acceleration, it renders even faster. It's like super fast. I mean, really, really fast. The reason that I'm going to leave, well, I guess I'll leave it on, but in the sample project that you're going to download in the one that I created, the demo, I actually left it off just so that everybody has compatibility. So no matter what computer you have, you'll be able to render that uh, project. And oh, let me actually show you real quick something really cool about this. Um, this project, you can just grab it as is, and if you want to change this to be your, your brand name or whatever, you can just change this here and literally type whatever you want it to be. So... There, I just change the text to have it be AE scripts, and boom, there it is. Because the type is always live, it just kept all of the, all of the stuff. So now the same exact animation, just happens for AE scripts. Look at that. I mean, super, super cool. Uh, of course, you might need to make some adjustments here for the, um, the little animation at the end. But that's it. You know, uh, even the zoom in at the uh, at the end, all of that. Look at how cool that looks. Very cool, right? All right, so let's just bring this back to Plexus. All right, so again, that's really how cool the text tool is, the fact that it's live. It's just really awesome. All right, so <clears throat> okay, so now that we're basically coming back here, what I wanted to do is because I wanted to get rid of the beams renderer because I'm going to basically switch from the beams renderer to the points renderer. And the way I did that was literally by just dissolving away. So maybe the number of, yeah, so keeping the number high up until the last frame, as you can see here, I'm moving the number of copies keyframe. It's preventing those lines, other lines from drawing. And then, and then just literally the last frame. So I have to zoom in here. So it's just one frame before. So we go one and bam. And then before we do that, we're also going to just dissolve it away. And the way we're going to do that is you just go over here and say opacity. You literally just keyframe, sorry, the, um, the beams render opacity is what we want. So you see it says get opacity from vertices. So right now it's getting the opacity from the path object. So we just turn that off and keyframe it from, say, around here. And then we'll just keyframe it to zero. 
So now as it's coming down, it's going to start fading away. And what I did is I actually made it fade away before the two came on. So the if we go back here to the text animator, so let's just go ahead and, uh, sorry, not the text animator, the, the beams renderer. So before the range ends, so just push that back so that it just dissolves away before before the tool fully comes on. And then it dissolves away for one frame. And now we can turn on the points renderer. And we're going to go ahead and keyframe the opacity for that guy. So here, this also has the same control. So just turn off get opacity from vertices. And then literally keyframe the opacity here going from, uh, I'm hitting the U key, by the way, just to get all my keyframes. So I'm going to go from opacity 0 to opacity 50. So now, as you can see, I basically exchanged from using the beams renderer to using the points renderer. And what I did is a little added effect when, when it dissolved on the points renderer, I put a, a, a copy of star glow as well as the regular glow, and you'll see that in the project when you open it. So that's just like added bonus to just give it that more like theatrical feel. We'll skip that step for now. And the little animation of the two I already showed you how I did that, but if you just do that here in the text animator, we'll go ahead and add the, um, so animate, well, this was the rotation, right? And, oh, it looks like I already had it. So here's my animator one, and we'll go ahead and add the property rotation. Turn off position, we don't need that anymore. And move the range selector. If we go to advanced, we can have it go from percentage to index. So if we figure it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. So we'll have it start at the seventh character and end at the eighth character, offset zero. So you can see, actually, no, maybe one back. Okay, so start at six and end at seven. That's it. All right. So now when I go ahead and animate the rotation, it's just going to animate the, the two character. So I just literally have it uh, skewed like this. And... If we go again and take a look at the, uh, should have said a keyframe there. Sorry about that. So let's, sorry for the ambulance. I live on 6th Avenue in New York City. So you're listening to 6th Avenue live and direct. All right, so set a keyframe there and listen to the ambulance while I move this around. So just have this, when we first dissolve up, it's there at uh, whatever degrees you want it to be. And then a couple frames later, we'll just have it be at zero. And I think it might be nicer to have this ease in. So I'm just going to do Shift F9. And if I look at the graph, I'm just going to make that be a nice smooth thing. So now when it comes in, bloop, see that? And again, a lot of these things can be uh, fine-tuned and tweaked. I added that little ding. Odd, odd, you know, I think sound really, really helps when you do animation. So you know, pick a nice piece of music or piece of sound effect or something, and that really inspires the design. Um, in this case, the ding is something I added, you know, separately. But anyway, all right, so now we're almost done. Isn't that a, amazing? Uh, the only thing we have to do now is do this sort of zoom in thing here. So here we're using a couple of uh, different things. This wall here is being created by the new facets renderer. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and add also the facets renderer. So when we add the facets renderer, well, nothing really happens. That's because there are no facets yet. Facets are only created when you have replication. So we'll go ahead and turn up the replication here to, I don't know, I think we had it at nine copies. And we can actually have it happen, you know, gradually. So it seems to like tick, 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 tick while it's doing that. And then we also go ahead and set a keyframe for the extrusion depth here. So if we hit U again. So extrusion depth, we'll go ahead and set another keyframe. So it's just set at zero for a little bit. And then we'll have it extrude. So we'll just turn up the extrusion depth. Now notice how it's going back. In this case, we actually want it to come forward. Or really, actually, we want it to go backwards and forwards. So another thing we're going to do is during this little moment when you don't see it, we're going to keyframe it from going plus Z, and then we'll go forward one frame, and we'll have it make it go both. So it actually extrudes from the center back and forth. You could have it just come forward if you wanted to. It's really up to you however you want to do it. So again, we're using this little sleight of hand, 
And now once we've done that, we can come here and have it extrude. And now it's going to come forwards and backwards. And you just have to make sure that now the facets renderer has a minimum distance that's going to work for you. So if we turn this up, you can see that we're starting to see these facets. Now they're black and white for now because they're pulling the color from the points, which are white. But there's one thing you need to be careful about now. Because at the beginning, we had... See, now we suddenly have facets here, and we don't want facets here. So really, all you have to do is just um, keyframe the maximum distance. So we'll go ahead and uh, uh, let's see, maximum distance. We'll, so this is what we wanted over here. So if you move this now, we'll go, we'll just put this at zero, really. And then, um, so in other words, there would have to be zero distance between points for there to be a facets, because that's never going to happen. You're not going to get, it's kind of like the equivalent of setting the opacity to zero. And then here you also can see opacity over distance. This is another way you can actually control how you want the opacity of the um, facets to be rendered. But in this, in our case, this is going to do the trick. So now we don't see any facets. And then when it starts coming forward, we'll have it just go from zero to, you know, 234 or whatever in this case. So now when it's going, we can actually see the facets being rendered. If we go ahead and rotate our camera around, you can see how there's facets on the left and right. But we'll go ahead and leave this at zero. And... <clears throat> We, as you notice, we had this cool uh, color palette going on here. And the way I did that was with the color map effector. So if we go under effector and we choose color map, we'll now see it here. And it's basically saying, pull the color map from where? It's asking for one of the layers. So we're going to go ahead and create a new comp. And we'll call this color map. As a matter of fact, you can see here I already have it. But we'll call this one color map 2, just so we can see the difference. And this is a brand new comp, and here we'll just go ahead and create a, a new solid. And we'll choose the um, gradient effect, the four color gradient effect. So just uh, type gradient here. And this is a uh, built-in built um, effect. So it's just literally, I think I left it at the default colors because I thought it was kind of neat. And then what you need to do is bring this new comp that you just created into your comp, which in this our case, it's comp two. And then I, I like to just throw them to the bottom of the uh, stack. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it to the bottom. Come on. And then just turn it off so it's not visible. And once it's in your comp, you can go back to the plexus layer and choose it from the color map. So now the color map will show this color map. And so as you can see, it immediately now starts pulling colors from that color map. And basically, it also maps it in different ways. So if you go map over plane, you can just play around and see which one you like the best. So if you want to have all the colors, here it shows you. You can also do something like this. You can, um, if you hold down the command or control key when you select new comp viewer, it will actually lock the current viewer and open a new window. So now we can go into the color map and literally move these, um, these dots around. Let's make this... Uh, see better so I'm gonna just shrink this down around so I can now move these uh, the, the colors around the pre comp and see the result in the parent comp so you can just move this around however you like so you can see obviously moving the stuff around gives you different looking effects or different looking things now notice that the points are being colored as well as the facets so this comes back to so I'm gonna go ahead and close this and come back to my main comp this comes back to that rendering order that I was talking about. Notice how the color map is being applied to uh, the path object. That means the uh, vertices of the path object are being colored, and then the facet is getting colors from the vertices. See that? So if I turn this off, then the facets are now getting a color from this color picker. So we actually do want the facets to get color from the vertices, but I think I left the I think I left the points white. Yeah, see, because I thought that gave it more of like a Hollywood lights feel. So the way I did that is just simply in the points renderer, don't just say don't get the colors from the vertices, and then you can just make them in this case white, 
and uh, the points capacity was keyframed. I think I eventually keyframed them up to 100%. So let's go here. So points capacity is set to 50% here. And then here we can just go, let's say to this point, we can have a keyframe and then bring it up to 100. And so you can see now that the points um, are 100%. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Just bring it a little bit down. Um, I think, and then one of the reasons the colors are, are more intense in this case is because I had actually put the glow effect on top of everything. So if we go ahead and put the glow effect, and we'll just put that on the at the end of the stack. So after the plexus layer here, as you can see right away, it's intensifying the colors, and you can adjust the threshold so that you know it applies at whatever level you want it to be. You can adjust the glow radius. So. And this is all standard After Effects stuff, so you can uh, adjust that however you want, but it's just showing you how that works. So um, let's go back to the color map real quick for one last thing. All right, so uh, you can basically apply it to the vertices or you can apply it to the faces, which is also going to change the way things look around. So just play around with all the settings here. And uh, as you can see here, it's, you know, it's just controlling it. I forgot exactly how I set it. Let's take a look what I did in my original one. So if we go to the color map, I applied it to the faces. Um, I made the map amplitude much larger. So if we go back here and we adjust the so faces, and if you adjust the, I think the map amplitude is not really doing anything in this case. Uh, let's take a look. That's the other thing, um, you know, you can't possibly remember what every little control does and every effect that you own. So one of the really cool things I think is about After Effects, and especially you know because the feedback is immediate, is literally just move sliders around, immediately see what they do, and then you know make your design be reflective or inspired by happy accidents. A lot of really cool things that I've done has been uh, uh, me playing around with the control, seeing a happy accident, and then kind of going with that. You know, uh, so let's just uh, see here. So um, I had it on the X Y. And then I applied the the color map. Oh, that's the other interesting thing. You can actually, um, and this is covered in other tutorials, but you can actually have it not just adjust the color, but you could actually have um, the faces be moved, you know, their position. See how that totally gives you a whole new thing because it's actually moving the faces based on the colors from the color map. Or you can also uh, rotate them around which gives you some really wild effects. And if you also wanted to color those, you would just kind of duplicate the color map. And then the second one, you would apply the color. So now you have color and, in this case, rotation, or color and position. See that? Uh, again, here we go. Happy accident. If you like the look of that, man, roll with that. And um, this is where the map amplitude works, because you can actually have it you know, kind of go from that, and then go you know, and have it go to zero. That's another cool effect. I don't know. Um, really, the infinite possibility—the possibilities are, are really infinite here because you could keep adding as many color maps, as many effectors, as many uh, renderers as you want. You can really do anything you want. And then, really, the last thing left to do here is just to animate the camera to go through the X. And that's just again standard um, After Effects stuff. I just uh, go ahead and keyframe the the camera here, and then just go forward a few frames, and then just literally zoom into it. And just make sure that, oops, make sure that we are centered in the middle of the X. And then I just went through to the end. Uh, keep going. I'm going to hold on the shift key to move it a little bit faster. So, and <laughs> there we go. All right, so that's now as you can see. I think I did a little bit more of a rotation, but you know, you can see this is also a pretty cool effect. Um, the very last thing um, is the um, I'm not going to cover the I'm not going to cover this this thing at the end because this is just basic After Effects stuff. But I will cover this. I don't know if you noticed that there was this very slight, very subtle star field. I created that with Plexus as well, so I'm just going to show you quickly how to do that. So if I go back to my Plexus layer, I'm going to add a new piece of geometry. I'm going to add a primitive. In this case, uh, you can do either a cube or a sphere. I think I did a sphere, and this is also going to show you a new concept, which is the concept of groups. Because I'm going to actually consider, uh, I wanted to render the star field separately than my Plexus text layer. Before I do anything, I'm going to check my path object. That's automatically set to group one. 
And what I'm going to do is this new primitives object, I'm going to set that to group 2. So all of the stuff I did right now, I wanted to all of that only to affect group 1. So I'm going to set the effect only group. Instead of all groups, I'm going to set them all to group 1. So here we go. Group 1, points render, group 1, uh, beams render. So notice how now it's not rendered because there's nothing rendering group 2 yet. So the beams render to group 1, the facets render to group 1. And that's it. So now, if I want to have something render group two, I have to add a new renderer to do that. What's really cool, it's all in the same stack, right? So I'm going to go ahead and add a new points renderer. And this points renderer is currently rendering all groups. Here it is. So points renderer two. I actually want it to just render group two because otherwise it would double render group one. And to make it feel like a star field, I added a noise effector. So just go ahead and add a noise effector. Where is the noise effector? There it is. And again, I only wanted to affect group two and just go ahead and really just tweak this up. If I wanted to bring down the number of stars, if you will, the number of points, I do that in the in the primitives object. I just go ahead and reduce the number of slices here. So I think I went something like five and five. So there you go. So now there's a few, you know, things. And you can really feel it when the camera is rotating here. I'm going to render the points really big so you can see it's really obvious right now. All right, so you can see here how it moves with the camera. And you can move the, if you want it to be bigger, you can spread them out. You can make the radius of the sphere bigger. Maybe we'll call, go ahead and 10 and 10. So and just uh, now the radius is really big. So now it, it's going to feel more like spacey. Even more, I think. So now it's just pushing them further and further away, and we can bring, probably bring this. Well, let's see how. Yeah, so let's let's make more. But I hope you understand the concept here. Um, the more slices, the more points they are. You can also add layers, it adds more points. So there it is. I think that feels pretty good. And now obviously the stars are really big. So then you can go because you have a separate points render. I can just control the size of those points separately. So I just I think I made them point size like one or two uh, I can't remember yeah so that's it's really really subtle but I think it helped give a sense of space to when we were rotating the camera maybe three there you can also uh, adjust the opacity so you can uh, not the color but yeah color and opacity so just bring down the opacity so they just feel like kind of like depth faded uh, let's say 40 percent and so that's it so that's that's the tutorial uh, ladies and gentlemen I hope you saw how quick and easy it is to do this really cool stuff. And then, of course, you know, you add a nice piece of music, some sound effects, and you got yourself a really cool theatrical logo sting animation in uh, just a few minutes using the new Plexus 2. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks.